It's Tis the Season-a-thon! Hello you guys, welcome to a new weekly vlog. This vlog is going to be dedicated to Tis the Season-a-thon, which I don't know who the hosts are because I don't prepare for anything, but I will link all of the hosts down below. I am sure you guys know what Tis the season a -thon is. I am going to be focusing on seasonal Christmassy wreaths, which, I mean, I think the whole point of the wreath-a-thon is to do that, so like, regardless of if any of these books even fit the prompts. We gonna read some Christmas shit on this channel for this week. I know one of the prompts is to read a book with snow on the cover and I am covered in that capacity. I started Mary Inkmas by Talia Hibbert and I have wanted to read this book for forever and now that it's finally in like the Christmassy season I mean I have no excuse. From what I can tell we at least open the book up with our main character and she's working at a coffee shop and this really hot guy who I think is a tattoo artist if I'm to believe there's any correlation between the title and the dude. His name is Cash. I have gotten to that point. We're gonna have to work through that or get over that name real quick. Always comes into her coffee shop and there's already like sexual tension right off the bat. I will update you guys as I learn more. It seems like a great time. I think the next prompt is holiday themed so snow on the cover holiday themed I got those two prompts covered I have how the Duke how the Dukes Stole Christmas by Tessa there Sarah McLean Sophie Jordan and jo Joanna Shu. all I know about this one is it's just like an anthology of historical romances set during Christmas time and that just sounds I want all of that right now. I also have another historical romance anthology and that is Seven Rogues for Christmas, which we got the good guys, we got the bad boys, we are having a great time. And then I have Royal Holiday by Jasmine Guillory, which is a Christmas royal kind of story which royalty and christmas time just go hand in hand like that is just how it is i don't make the rules i'm just telling you them even if all of these don't get read in this week i want to read them at least in the month of december so we got all that going down and then i am also 40 percent into heartless by marissa meyer i am rereading this because i have just been thinking about this book ever since I read it in February. I bumped up my rating from a 4.5 to a 5 star because I just adore this book so, so much. You would have already heard me talk about this book in a recent video. I did a favorite audiobook, so go check that out because it's my favorite audiobook and I'm listening to it right now and I feel like this is just be gonna become a Christmas tradition because it has to do with such good baked goods. It's a fairy tale retelling. It's just so good. And this fits the prompt for music related because, you know, Kanye West. I'm monetized now so I ain't gonna put no copyrighted music in this video. <laughs> the other prompt is to read baked goods while reading and I'm way ahead of this challenge because the Madeleines from Costco were on sale today and I got me a bucket of them. If you guys haven't tried these Madeleines, I'm sorry, you need to go to your local Costco and get five of them because they're so good. The only challenge that I don't have is to read a book gifted to you. I'm pretty good at reading the books that people give me. I am going to read more. I am very hyper right now. It's like 1 a.m. I have to be up in like six hours to go to school to do a presentation on a proposal of a thesis project that I don't even have to do because I'm freaking graduating this semester. But you know what college just doesn't understand? is that time management and efficiency and they just like to waste my time and money even longer to my last dying breath that was an unnecessary tangent but 
it's what you guys got. Hello, you guys. I am just eating my lunch of little wontons, which are literally just the mini versions of the pot stickers that I already have, but I needed both of them because I'm obsessed with dumplings. So that's where we are. I promise that I do have different outfits every single day, but the fact of the matter is every single time I come home, I stripped down and put on my sweaters and my pajamas so you guys never see all of my cute outfits because nobody has time to keep pants on past the time which is needed so i have been listening to heartless like i said and there isn't really much i can say about it because it is a reread i just really really love this book a whole lot it just makes me feel good when i read it i am going to read more of mary inkmas i read a whole bunch of chapters last night like I really wanted to just finish the book last night but I'm really really enjoying it it is so cheesy and it just it reads like a Hallmark movie and that's all I want to read during the Christmas season I just really really like it and like I said like the sexual tension between our main characters is so on point I just love it so so much talia hibbert can really write some romance and i am 100 percent going to be checking out more of her books i mean i've obviously heard about her as a romance author before but now that i've actually read a book by her mm, she knows what she's doing <laughs> So I have quite a bit to update you guys on. Firstly, I finished Heartless today on my way home and I absolutely loved it. It's so weird because like there's nothing inherently special about it or unique about it. It's just another fairy tale retelling that is, you know, predictable and it's not like revolutionary in any aspect, but I just felt really happy while reading it and I just never stopped thinking about it. The ending of this book is so good. I mm, mm, it shivers down my spine good. It's such a good atmospheric read and it's such like a good wintry read. It's not really taking place during the winter time but just because it's so descriptive in its atmosphere and like the baking and all that stuff. Baking is always attributed to like the Christmas season in my opinion so it's just so good and then i also finished mary ink miss by talia hibber and this was just so cute it was just such a cheesy hallmark movie but also it still had like the steamy scenes there wasn't as much steamy scenes as i would have liked in this book especially because i loved the sexual tension between the two main characters so much like i feel like we could have gotten more but i'm very happy with this and i'm really excited to read more of talia hibbert because i feel like i'm really really going to like her romance books. I gave Mary Inkmas four out of five stars. It was just so good and it was like really great for kicking off the festive season. I started How the Dukes Stole Christmas and this is a Christmas historical romance anthology which has four short stories in here and I read the first one by Tessa Dare and guys y'all were not lying about Tessa Dare. I literally fell in love with her. The five page mark. I could not believe how funny she was, how effortlessly great of a writer she was. Like you can just tell she was just born to do this. I was in love with the couple, page 25. In a novella, that's exactly what you want because it's only like 90 pages. And so the fact that she did make me fall in love with these characters so early on just again goes to show how good she is at this whole romance situation. And like, I never doubted Tessa Dare's ability. I just never picked any of her books up because I clearly don't know myself and my taste and what I like because I am a history nerd. 
I like romance so you would think hmm I should probably read like the most popular historical romance author but now I am fully prepared to read all of her backlist. She compared the love interest. She was like, his look aren't like a velvety cushion, more like a country church bench. His looks like grow with age or something like that. Like it was so ridiculous, but it was so perfect. And I'm like, how? I, I, how and i like, totally get the appeal with historical romance because the promiscuity is like so outrageously conservative compared to today so when they like touch each other's wrists you're like oh it's getting spicy i loved it a lot i'm a stan and i've only read 90 pages of her works i can't even fathom how i'm gonna be when i read a full-length novel by her so i am adding a book to my tbr maybe i'll start it tonight that's gonna be once upon a winter's eve by tessa dare this is her other christmassy themed novella a part of the spindle cove series this is just going to be a night of historical fiction and hopefully you guys don't mind apparently that's the that's the woman i've become and i'm not at all mad about it whatsoever i think i'm going to go make myself some tea okay so let's pick a tea i have quite some festive teas so i have sugar cookie sleigh ride that's an option we also have sugar plum spice that's an option as well yes i understand i have a lot of teas but it's an addiction Ooh, cinnamon apple spice that's not really holiday per se like it's not like holiday holiday but it's like holiday you know what i mean oh i also have apple pie a la mode this used to be my favorite one but i don't think i have a tea strainer thingy oh, this is the one if i have a tea thing this is definitely going to be the one okay excuse whatever mess you can see in the background and i'm just whispering because it's late and everybody's sleeping but i have one of these but it's broken so couldn't use this one but i forgot we have this like fancy tivana loose tea maker thingy and i had to look up on youtube how to use it because i think we've only used it like once i like my tea pretty strong because i find that tea is a little weak for my flavor capacity i don't know if it's proper terms but i like my tea very strong and then you take this with your tea and i just fill up the water <laughs> to go so if i make a mess in the kitchen at least it will be documented and you guys can enjoy this part for your own entertainment you're welcome theoretically this is supposed to go on top of here and only the water or the liquid is gonna drain from the bottom into the cup that's what's supposed to happen but i'm afraid once i lift this up from the ground that everything is going to spill. Okay, we're just gonna drag it over so you guys get a good view of what is about to happen. Okay, catastrophe is avoided and I just... This is what engineering has come to.
Okay, so I just finished Once Upon a Winter's Eve by Tessa Dare, and I'm gonna give this one three star. I loved the writing and everything and all that, uh, just like I did in the little novella that I read, but I did not like the love interest whatsoever. So this is a little novella in her Spin Spinster's Cove series, and it seems that the Spinster Spinster's Cove is like a little island that is kind of a safe haven for women who maybe lost their social standing or don't have family or anything like that. So our main character, Violet, she's like this really, really smart character. She knows like six or nine languages and she's just residing in Spencer's Cove and she seems to be like a little wallflower and just kind of keeps to herself. And one day at a ball or like a dance or something, you know, these these people always be always be dressing up and dancing. And I wish that could be me. And this random guy like comes in to the manor or whatever, and he's injured, and he faints basically in Violet's arms, and that's where it goes from there. I liked this more until we learned the identity of the stranger, and then once I learned who he was, I was just like, oh. So he ain't shit. I didn't like him and Violet deserved way better. So that was a little disappointing, but I'm still really, really loving Tessa Dare right now. I think December is just going to be me reading Tessa Dare books because I'm having a really, really fun time, even despite not really loving the couple in this one. Well, at least just not loving the love interest. I love Violet as a main character. So like she, Honestly, Violet was fucking bad ass. There was this point, and I'm not going to spoil too much because, again, this is a novella, so it's kind of short. But there's a point in which they're getting all, like, spicy, you know? And, like, the love interest is like, oh, let me show you how good it can be. And Violet is just like, excuse me? Like, as if I don't know what an orgasm is? Like, you need to step back and give me some answers, sir. You're not gonna distract me with your masculine whims. Yes, we love her and we support her 100%. She deserved so much more. Okay, so we are going to the library because I have a couple holds to pick up and I have to, oh, hello lighting, and I have to drop off some books that I've had for literally like over 40 days and I still haven't finished the books, so I'm hoping I can even check it out another time. Hopefully there aren't any holds for them because I would like to finish them eventually. And then we are going to check out we. I always say we, you know, you see, I just want to include you guys. Like I'm such a good friend, right? And I also want to check out the historical romance section of my library. My neighborhood is made up of predominantly 80% Karens. So I'm hoping that it's popping. song Ryan you don't know where's that from is it Elsa is it frozen did she sing it good yeah we stand with the novels in this house can you tell that I'm trying to put my tree in the back of these videos as much as possible this is a better angle okay I'm back from the library and I got some things that I'm very excited about. I shall start with the one I'm kind of least excited about but still excited about and that is Confessions of a Royal Bridegroom. This one from what I can tell is about this like scoundrel, this, this scandalous man because aren't they always? He has been saddled with an abandoned baby boy and an unflappable intriguing spinster summoned to nurse him. And the spinster is a spy. So love that. Not crazy about the child scenario, but I also love this cover. I love the colors in it and it just, it really, really appealed to me. 
literally just noticed that in the blurb it says praise for Vanessa Kelly's secrets for seducing a royal bodyguard. That's a different book than this. But now, as soon as I'm done filming this, I'm going to go check if I have seducing a royal bodyguard in my library because that's exactly what I want. And then I got Temptations of a Wallflower by Eva Lee, Eva Lay. This one, a very very excited about. This one is about the shy Lady Sarah Brampton and she is a wallflower girl. She's very sweet, keeps to herself, but she is secretly an erotic romance author and that's all I need. I don't even care who the love interest is. I don't care what the plot of this book is. It's also blurred by Tessa Dare, which is great. Of course, I couldn't get historical romance and not get a Highlander romance. And from what little I know about historical romance, Lindsay Sand is the queen of Highlander romance, specifically this book, Falling for the Highlander. Chandler must have talked about it eventually because queen of romance. I don't exactly know the entire plot of this, but I don't need to. It's a historical romance. And I mean, look at this cover. I too am falling for the Highlander. And now of course the star of the show and this haul is the Duchess Deal by Tessa Dare. This was the only Tessa Dare book that they, I, my library physically had. And also my library kind of sucks because they don't have like a designated romance section, which I mean, I guess I get because some people are like embarrassed to have romance books or whatever, but I had to like scour the entire fiction section to look at all of these historical romances. And I was like, why can't you guys just have a designated romance section and just be done with it. This is about a girl who's like a seamstress, which already, yes. I believe that she was commissioned to make the wedding dress of the Duke's betrothed, but she left him at the altar because I think he was like scarred in battle or something like that. And like, she was like appalled by his appearance or something. And she runs to his manor or castle or whatever you call him. And he, she's like, I want to get paid for my dress that was never worn. And they strike up a deal that she becomes the Duchess instead and they just marry each other and it's a win-win. I mean, that sounds like a great situation to me. The only reason I know a whole lot about this one in particular is just because this is a very popular series. It's very short. It's a lot shorter than I thought it was going to be. I'm so excited. Ooh, let me get a thumbnail. So that is it for my little haul. I'm so excited to read all of these historical romances. So I just got a package and I already opened it because I thought it was from my aunt for Christmas, but it was the Tea Dragon Society and this was from Whitney and I'm just, I love Whitney so much. I'm sure you guys all know about her and love her just as much as I do, but she really is just the sweetest human being on the planet. She got me a cruel prince for my birthday as well. And now she got me the Tea Dragon Society, which I have been wanting for so, so long, not only for myself, but also for my little sister. My little sister is seven and she's trying to i'm trying to get her more into reading she does pretty good at it she's well she's a great reader but she doesn't exactly like reading all that much so i'm really excited that i can actually read this and act and have her read it as well so this is just really really sweet so thank you so much whitney i love it so much and i love you so much and this is just the perfect present ever also we we need the tea dragon plushies we need them katie please please give us the tea dragon plushies this is just like a little picture book graphic novel about these little tea dragons who sprout tea leaves and these people like harvest them and take care of them and in the back there's also this like little handbook on how to take care of them and i'm just so soft i'm so so excited to read this. This is actually perfect timing because the only prompt that I was missing for Tis the Seasonathon was a book gifted to me and now I can actually read this and I can fulfill the prompt and I'm so 
cutest thing ever. I'm over halfway through The Duchess Deal by Tessa Dare, which doesn't really fit any of the prompts for this readathon, but I but I really just wanted to read it. So I'm reading it and we're gonna just make it work somehow in the challenges. I'm sure there's something I can fit it for. Hello, so I just finished The Duchess Deal by Tessa Dare and this actually wasn't too far off from the whole Tis the season of thon theme because the last chapter in here they did celebrate Christmas so I'll take that as a win. It was so good. I just love, I just love everything about this romance and it was funny and it was just swoon worthy and it was smutty and it was just, it was great. <laughs> I knew this was gonna be cute, but I didn't know how cute it was going to be. I legit almost cried reading this. It was just so adorable and there was so much rep in here and it was so sweet and wholesome. It just, I would like a Rubos dragon right this instant. Thank you. I wish we got even more dragons, not necessarily even in the story but like in the end part of the book like i wanted at least one more page showing four more dragons but i just loved this so much and i really want to get tea dragon festival now so i can get more content this was just so cute and like i want this to become a little animated series or something i don't know world is so beautiful and i like feel so inspired by it it's just ah, I love it. I love it so much. So, five out of five stars. totally and completely stuffed. If you saw my last clip, I went to Superior Dairy, which is one of our local um, ice cream places, and they specialize in doing like giant sundaes and like giant servings of ice cream, and we had dinner, we went there, and then we also got some churros, so oh, I am so full. But I did just want to close off this vlog real quick. I managed to finish the second story in How the Dukes Stole Christmas, but I still need two more stories to go, so I'm not really going to wrap up my thoughts on that book yet, but just so you guys know, I am halfway through of that book and I'm hoping to finish this in the month of December eventually. But for this vlog, I killed it. I finished five books, I think. I finished Heartless by Marissa Meyer, Mary Inkmas by Talia Hibbert. I finished Once Upon in Winter's Eve by Tessa Dare. I finished Duchess Deal by Tessa Dare. And I finished The Tea Dragon Society by Katie O'Neill. I had a super, super great reading week. This was a very productive readathon, and I really liked how this vlog came out, so I hope you guys did too. This is a really long vlog already, so I'm not going to keep you any longer, but I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog, and if you didn't, there's always next week. Bye! <laughs>